Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wiryawan and today I want to share a long-term review of my Panasonic Lumix G85. So the G85 was released back in 2016, so it's almost 7 years old and it introduces some features that are very important back then. I bought this particular G85 in 2019 and I've been using this camera ever since as my serious camera for both photography and video. I even brought this particular G85 for travel photography to Australia, to Bali, to Iceland and New Zealand. You can check out the travel vlogs up here. But anyway, this particular G85 performed really well on those trips. However, I gotta be very honest with you guys. This Panasonic G85 right here is not my favorite camera, I'm sorry. Uh, you guys who followed my channel might already know that I prefer smaller, lighter cameras because that's my philosophy. I want the minimal amount of gear and maximum amount of output. And that's why I much prefer the Panasonic GX85 as my favorite camera. You can learn more about why this is my favorite camera besides of its size and weight. You can check out the video up here. However, even though this is not my favorite camera, the Panasonic G85 is arguably the most important camera that I ever had during my lifetime because it produces many contents, especially YouTube videos like what you are watching right now and this camera has been very comfortable to use for that kind of purpose. And by the way, I'm recording this video right now, not using with the G85 obviously, but my other videos, usually the talking head sequence are being recorded using the G85. Right now it's recorded using my beloved DJI Pocket 2, my vlogging camera. Anyway, by the end of this video, I hope that you learn more about the Panasonic G85 so you can uh, better decide whether this camera is for you or not, especially in the context of 2023. Speaking of 2023, a lot of new technological features are now being implemented in newer camera bodies. And now the question, is the G85 still worth it in 2023? I think the short answer is yes, I think it is still worth it even though it doesn't have new features such as face detect autofocus or new sensor with bigger megapixel, I think this camera still has its charms, it still has its mojo and I think it is still very usable in 2023 for both photography and video. Now I wanna share to you some of my favorite features of the G85 that I really use the most. First feature that I really love from the Panasonic G85 is its image quality. Well, that's kind of weird because image quality is not the first thing that comes in mind when we're talking about the G85 because it uses an older 16 megapixel micro voltage sensor from the GX7. However, the one on the G85 has been modified so it doesn't have anti-aliasing filter. So the amount of sharpness, details, and dynamic range that this camera can capture is actually very impressive for what it is. Right now, I will share some sample pictures so that you can better understand what the sensor can actually do. All I wanna say is that we don't need the latest and the greatest, the biggest megapixel, the biggest sensor size to get great photos and videos. All we really need is just a solid sensor and a good set of photography and video techniques so that we can capture the best photos and videos using whatever camera we already have. The G85 has a solid sensor already. Even though it's an old sensor, I think it still performs really well and it helps me to capture beautiful photos and videos. Next important features on the Panasonic G85 is the microphone input and the fully articulating and flipping screen. These are two very important features. With the mic input, I'm able to use a proper microphone so that I can get a better audio quality on my videos. And with the fully articulating and flipping screen, I'm able to frame myself when I'm doing a talking headshot right now. And even for photography, I'm able to do a lower angle kind of shots, higher angle kind of shots, whether it's horizontal or vertical easily. Most of my other micro photos cameras don't really have this feature, thus I cannot really use them for making YouTube videos like this. And even though I can use them, sometimes it's just not as convenient as the G85 because it has all of those features. 
properly on the camera. Another important feature that I really love from the Panasonic G85 is its in-body stabilizer. So a lot of the other microfocus camera back then, except Olympus microfocus cameras, don't have in-body stabilizer. And that means when you are using non-stabilized lenses, you won't have any kind of stabilization at all. Some Panasonic cameras back then have some kind of image stabilizer on the sensor, but it's very rudimentary and you don't get to use it when you are recording video. With the Panasonic G85, that's changed. Now the in-body stabilizer is implemented properly and you'll be able to use non-stabilized lenses for video and the stabilizer works really well for uh, photography as well. You can do slower shutter speed photography so you don't always need a tripod and for video once again it really helps to capture smooth b-roll footages that I really love to use without having to use any device such as gimbals or any other camera support. Next favorite feature of the Panasonic G85 is its weather sealing. It's not really a feature that you can feel or touch. It's not really tangible, but it just gives you a peace of mind knowing that your camera will be able to handle some elements. So I brought this camera to Iceland where we have lots of waterfall photographies and lots of water splashes hits the camera and this camera is still performing fine thanks to its weather sealing. Next feature that I really love from the Panasonic G85 is its PV grip as well as the manual controls. First, let's talk about the PV grip. Look at the grip over here. It's very big. It's very nice. It's very ergonomic. It makes it easier for me to hold this camera for longer periods of time, especially with bigger micro focus lenses such as the Olympus 12 to 14 millimeter f2.8 or the Panasonic 35 to 100 millimeter f2.8 or this Panasonic Leica 8 to 18 mm f2.8 to f4 or even a large telephoto lens like the Panasonic 100 to 300 mm f4 to f5.6. Speaking of manual control, there are plenty of buttons and dials in this camera so that you can change any kind of camera settings. You want to change the aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO. You can uh, assign function buttons to your likings to change whatever settings that's available on the camera. And also there are uh, custom function buttons that you can use to store uh, your most used settings. For example, if you're shooting video, you can set one custom function button for uh, 50 frames per second, kind of 1080 video, and then the other one for 4K or something like that. It's just very customizable. There are plenty of buttons and you can change whatever you need to change easily without having to go into the menu. Last but not least, an important feature that isn't really a feature with the G85, but I still really love from it, is its mojo. I cannot really explain it, but this is another camera that makes me want to pick it up and go out and take some photographs with it. It just has that kind of enjoyment factor. I cannot really explain it to you. It's not really tangible, but whenever I'm using this camera, I'm always smiling. I'm always happy. I feel very joyful whenever I'm using this camera. And yeah, sometimes it's not just about the end result. It's not just about getting a nice photographs or getting a nice video. Sometimes it's about the process of doing photography. Are you able to enjoy the process, the step-by-step, -step, the sequence of what you need to do before you take any shot with your camera? And with this camera, I really found that enjoyment factor. It's different enjoyment factor from the GX85. This has that convenience factor as well because it is small and I'm able to carry it everywhere. This one's not as easy to carry, but whenever I have the opportunity to bring this camera along with me, I always feel like this camera is really something that's nice on my hand and I'm able to enjoy my moments while I'm taking pictures with this camera. So in conclusion, again, I just want to say that I think the G85 is still worth it in 2023. Sure, as I mentioned before, there are many other cameras, newer cameras with lots of newer features and technology as well. Face detect autofocus, better sensor and whatnot. But I still think the G85 still has its charms. And for the price that it's asking right now, I think it is still a very solid camera if you want a budget hybrid camera for both photography 
and video and personally i will still use this camera for many years in the future for my youtube videos for photography for uh, all sorts of different kinds of content creation until the g85 is broken or something like that and that wraps up today's video so that is all for today's video i hope that today's video about the g85 will help you to make a better decision whether the g85 is the correct camera for you or not so please comment down below what is your favorite camera and also if you have any question about today's video please let me know on the comments down below also don't forget to support my channel by liking this video sharing this video and subscribing to my channel down below if you want to support my channel even further consider using the affiliate links on the description or use the super thanks button they will greatly help my channel to grow even better in the future. Thank you and see you on the next video. Goodbye.